Battlefield 3, at the time it was released, was a landmark game for the Battlefield franchise. It represented quite a big shift in direction, and it offered players a far smoother gameplay experience than what they'd had previously, and it really upped the stakes when it came to graphical fidelity as well. It attracted the biggest audience to come to a Battlefield game in the franchise so far, and one that I think the team hadn't quite expected, but that team seemed to nail something that really stuck with the people that were playing this game. My first memories of Battlefield 3 came when my friend asked me if I wanted to come and see his brand new gaming PC. Rather jealous at the time, but I had just got my own part-time job, so I was planning on getting one of my own very soon, and it seemed like a good idea maybe to go over and try his out on the mouse and keyboard for the first time, because I hadn't played any first-person shooters on the PC up to that point. I'd had a PS3 for the last three years and I've been using a controller and I was fairly good at that but I did want to make the jump to PC at some point so why not use my friend's PC and see if I can train myself up a bit. Now Battlefield 3 at that point was running Operation Metro on Rush during the beta I think which was still to this day one of my favorite map and mode combos in the Battlefield series along with Conquest on Operation Metro which might surprise some people, but I'll explain why that is later on in the video. Perhaps saying it was one of the best map and mode combos is not the best way of saying it. It's one of the most memorable, because you played it so many times. It was like Grenade City in the Metro underneath, and it was like Sniper Heaven in the park outside if you played on Rush. The map was just so popular with people who just wanted to grind out kill after kill after kill. And to be honest, who could blame them? It was the perfect map for it. Now, after playing the game on my mate's PC over a few nights, we worked together at the same place so I could just crash on his sofa and sleep the night there, I decided to just go and buy my own PC. I'd had my eye on one for a good amount of time, so I just went and ordered it, and a week later I had my own system that I could play Battlefield 3 on. Now, as I mentioned, I've been playing on the PS3 for the last three years, so I just bought this £800 computer, a new mouse and keyboard, and I wasn't comfortable playing on the platform whatsoever, but that's where Operation Metro actually came to my rescue. Most players of Battlefield 1 know that if you wanted to warm up for some bigger matches before you jumped into Conquest or Rounds of Rush, if you wanted to get your aim in, then you jumped onto Noshar Canal's TDM. Well, at the time, I couldn't get my aim in because I was brand new to PC gaming, and the people that were playing on Noshar Canal's TDM servers were, well, much better than me, and I didn't want to die every single time I tried to shoot at someone. So that's where Operation Metro became almost my best friend for the start of Battlefield 3. I was like a baby giraffe trying to stand up for the first time. I really struggled with the mouse and keyboard, and I'm sure lots of people who've transitioned from console to PC will say exactly the same thing. I kept putting the mouse too close to my keyboard and then bumping them together so I couldn't turn my soldier around properly. I was hitting the wrong keys on the mouse and the keyboard because I just wasn't used to using my fingers that way. And the worst thing of all here, definitely, I had a sore pinky finger on my left hand because I hadn't trained it to be able to stretch over to the shift button so I could put sprint on my soldier. Only new PC players know that pain, I'm sure, because now I don't get it at all, but I can stretch my pinky finger on my left hand a hell of a lot further out than I can on my right. Still, I persevered and I stuck with Operation Metro because on 64-man conquest servers, standing still at choke points all the time, I started to build up this muscle memory with the mouse, which is obviously the most important. I could then aim properly, I could fire properly, I could start to flick onto people that were close to me that might appear next to me, and I'd know I was starting to get some kills that I wasn't getting when I first started to play. Not only that, but after about a month or so, I was much more comfortable with the keyboard and movement of my soldier wasn't a huge issue anymore. Because I was used to using an analog stick, which you only have to use with your thumb, and suddenly you have to use W, A, S and D with three different fingers, it was a little bit confusing to begin with. It sounds silly me saying that now because I just look at it and naturally when I go to type on a keyboard, my fingers instantly go to the right position. But back when I started PC gaming, that just wasn't a thing for me. And I'm sure that's the same for a lot of people who are now starting out 
on the PC. Operation Metro basically taught me how to play PC shooters, and while it's in no way the best map ever designed for Battlefield, it will stick with me as one of those good maps because of what it enabled me to do. I now play exclusively on PC, and this YouTube channel that you're watching this video on exists, I think, because I had the confidence to play on PC and start recording PC games after just a few months. Some of my first videos on this YouTube actually came from Battlefield 3. I was part of this 64-man mortar strike event back in the day. I had to run down the road on Operation Firestorm, trying not to die from 32 soldiers sitting at the other end of the road, firing their mortars and just blowing people up. It was really fun times. And from there, I think I really started with the channel after the Aftermath DLC launch. So, a good stretch of time after having got my PC. I wasn't really into making videos at that point. I made a few because I saw on the Reddit pages that people would upload funny moments, so funny things that happened to me ended up on my channel, but where I got into commentaries was the Aftermath DLC, and arguably that's the best DLC for Battlefield 3, thematically anyway. It changed up a lot of what Battlefield 3 had currently gone for, which was this blue hue of bullets and pain, and it changed the map design to focus a bit more on urban locations, and it changed the hue over to yellowy-orange, because, you know, dice, sun flare, and going over the top on graphics. The Close Quarters DLC, although many thought it was a cue to the Call of Duty fans that Battlefield 3 had managed to suck in, I thought that was a really good DLC as well. I really enjoyed running around with some of the SMGs that were fast firing and getting lots of kills, chaining them all together. And I loved the Zebra Tower map. That map was just incredible. How that it was so small, but for some reason 32 players could hide on it and then sort of clash playing TDM. Really, really good fun. The gunplay in Battlefield 3 was very satisfying, and thinking back now, it was probably one of my favourite parts of the game. And that's if you look past the 10 hertz tick rate that servers ran out. Apparently, didn't used to be an issue back then. I mean, yes, you got shot around the corners all the time, but it wasn't this netcode issue that it is today. You could have some really, really good gunfights in that game. However, I digress back to the Aftermath DLC. It introduced the Scavenger game mode, which I absolutely adored. And I'm a little bit sad that DICE didn't bring it forward into other titles, because I think it fits almost every era that you could set Battlefield in. Basically, the mode pitted two teams against each other in this TDM-style map, and you could only start with pistols, which you could choose yourself, so you could have a revolver or a cartridge-fed pistol, and then you'd need to go and find weapons located on the map, and the more difficult a place was to get to, the better the weapon you'd find when you got there, unless somebody else had already taken it. And the Aftermath maps really suited this mode, because after all, they were set in the Aftermath of an earthquake, and needing to find weapons would of course be a priority in what was a war zone. The whole scavenger mode idea, I think, could be put into any Battlefield game, really. It would have made sense in BF4, Hardline with its cops and robbers theme, and even in Battlefield 1. I mean, can you imagine being in the trenches on the Western Front, all you've got is a pistol, and you need to find weapons hidden along those trench lines in little caches. The best weapons are out in No Man's Land. That could be really, really cool. And with the beauty of hindsight now, I think another thing that struck me about why I like Battlefield 3 so much, there was no spoiling the surprise. Because there was no CTE, community test environment, to release new content on, ruining that surprise, I was always super pumped to know that there was a new patch coming or a new DLC was on its way because, well, the information had been so well guarded and it was only released when it needed to be. And as much as I respect developers from all studios nowadays for being more open with the communities that play the games about new updates and bug fixes and things like that, I do feel it somewhat ruins the surprise that new announcements would bring. Battlefield 3 Aftermath was a DLC that nobody really expected to be what it was, but it was very, very good. And Endgame was awesome as well, with the large open maps to play Capture the Flag on. A little known fact, actually, DICE didn't make Endgame. That was made by Visceral Games, as a test to see if they were ready to make their own Battlefield title, which eventually became Battlefield Hardline. Oh, and there was a rumour that was floating around the middle of Battlefield 3's life cycle. I think 
around the Armored Kill DLC, something like that. There was going to be this all-American DLC that was going to come out for BF3, and it was going to give us maps based in America. Again, that was Battlefield Hardline starting its development, which was essentially an all-American Battlefield game, just with cops and robbers instead of that military setting. But essentially, going back to my other point, I feel that this community testing kind of ruins the surprise for brand new content coming to Battlefield 1. Especially in the age we live in, with everything being so social now, everyone knows about something the moment it comes out. And that kind of ruins the surprise a little bit when the developers come to do their trailers and the big reveal of the DLC and the release of it, because you kind of already know what's coming. I think, however, what really got me to like Battlefield 3 in the end was the infantry combat and the gunplay. At first, I didn't really like it because it was so much faster and so much slicker than Bad Company 2. And of course, if you've grown accustomed to that, then it's going to take you a bit of time to adjust. But once I had adjusted, I fell in love with the gunplay. Nosh Arkanau's TDM might be the warm-up maps, but Friday Night Battlefield... Well, not that it was called that then, but on Friday night, Nosh Arkanau's TDM, 32 players, just go absolutely mental with the AEK. And I can just remember going on some incredible, incredible streaks. And I know you shouldn't play Battlefield just to go on kill streaks, but, you know, that was my jam back then when I wasn't making too many YouTube videos. I absolutely adored the gunplay in Battlefield 3. And uh, it's probably what I miss most so far moving forward. But thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening to me ramble about Battlefield 3. If you missed my video on the start of my Battlefield career with Bad Company 2, I've linked that down in the description. And stay tuned for the next video in the series, Battlefield 4, that'll come out in the next couple of days or so. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.